This loom is being used to weave single-use plastic bags into reusable totes. You know, you could see the Dwayne Reeds in there, the CVS, the, the Home Depots, you know, the Isle of New York bags in there. Park Avenue International is a family-run leather factory in New York City, one of the last of its kind. And just as New York bans plastic bags, it's giving them a new future. The construction and the design was pretty much inspired by this. This is a carpet that I made all from leather scraps and remnants that were, you know, on the cutting room floor. And from this, I figured if I could do this with leather, why can't I do this with plastic? And, you know, after six months of trial and error, we were able to figure out the right technique. By heat fusing the bags together end to end and cutting them into long strips, they create something like yarn or thread. These are the same machines that we use for pretty much any leather good construction. The key was figuring out how to combine soft and harder plastics. So in the beginning, when we first started this, we were using all soft plastic bags, like the single use that you get at a, a supermarket. But we noticed when we took it off the roll, the bag wouldn't stand up on its own. So we went back to the drawing board and you know, I started using the heavier plastics that were coming through the factory and mixing that in with the softer plastics. This way when the bag is made, it can actually stand up on its own. So it's a lot stronger now. You know, this bag could probably hold at least 50 to 75 pounds. The idea for this project came to Alex DeBog one night when he was taking out the garbage. You know, I realized this is one family's garbage on a single week. You know, what are the other eight and a half million people in New York City doing? I was like, you know, this is crazy. So, you know, I started collecting plastic. I started collecting all the, the film and all these different types of wrappings that came into my factory. I started having my mother and my family members start collecting all their plastic bags. Here we have about 22 garbage bags full of plastic that we've collected um, in the last six months. Um, there's not, pretty much nothing we're not using from bubble wrap to heavy plastic film to bread wrapping and even shipping packaging for clothing from clothing companies. It's been an uphill battle. You know, I get mixed signals from, you know, my employees at the factory, from my father. When Alex started collecting the plastic, I say, what, are you bringing garbage to the factory? Where are you going to put it? For me, I'm old-fashioned. I'm born in Lebanon in 1952, and I came to the United States in uh, 1976 during the Civil War in Lebanon. And when I came, I learned how to make uh, handbags in the New York City. And after five years, I opened my uh, own factory. Yeah, I, I was against this because I say, you're going to waste your time. We're going to buy garbage bags. You know, as a father of two boys now, there's nothing more I want than for them to have a clean city to grow up in like I did. Primero, eh, es, una, es una experiencia muy bonita, o sea, trabajar con un nuevo material. Eh, es, es lo que no hacemos todos los días, pero también, o sea, veo que es importante porque ayudamos a, a salvar nuestro mundo. The bag is called the Any Bag, short for a New York bag. It has about 95 plastic bags in it, and DeBog is selling it for $138. That price is quite high compared to many totes flooding the market these days, but DeBog says his bag is a luxury item. Plus, he argues, it has environmental benefits that make its price tag worth it. He doesn't know yet how well they'll sell. The cost of the any bag really reflects the, the process of the making of it. It's on a hand loom and hand fabricated. You know, the, the weaving process alone is very time consuming, which costs a lot of money, especially being here in New York City. The time 
and uh, the employee that's the investment not the investment the material material is coming as a free only the trimming we pay for it if you not gonna make it you're gonna lose money and it's not uh, today is the the labor is not like before uh, today is the labor is very high and especially here in new york city this has been a you know a big project but i'm doing it for my boys and for all the other kids out there So, you know, considering the ban taking into effect, I mean, everybody's going to rush out now and try to buy these reusable bags, these canvas bags or paper bags. You got to remember, those now need to be made. So with that mass manufacturing comes CO2 emissions and carbon footprints. So the best practice is just use what you have. And Debag is not worried about the effect of the plastic bag ban on his new product. Between the plastic packaging shielding leather supplies coming into his factory and new partnerships with local plastic recycling centers, he's set. Plus, all the stores that currently have plastic, they can just throw it out. So my job is to go out there, collect it, and give it a second life. Last weekend he had a show, I went with him. People uh, was so happy what he's doing, and uh, I think so is going to be good, I feeling. Uh, but I don't tell him sometimes. <laughs> I can't give a compliment. <laughs> but now every person I see him, I tell him, do you have any plastic uh, bag? Uh, give it to me. I started collecting plastic. I do joke with my son in the morning with, when we're driving. And the west side, I see those plastic uh, hanging in the trees. I tell him, look, you want me to stop to take those plastic? He start laughing. I say, come on, Dad, <laughs> not that much. Uh...